The Pittsburgh Steelers make a major move in signing Miles Jack, the linebacker recently released by the Jacksonville Jaguars to a two-year $16 million deal. I think it's a big move that Kevin Colbert's making to address the linebacker situation in Pittsburgh, not just for right now, but potentially for the future, because there's a really interesting plan that could be in place with the Devin Bush situation as that continues to develop. We'll talk about that, the rest of the plans for the free agency, how that continues to impact the Steelers' salary cap, their plans moving forward, and how, how the Kevin Colbert and Mike Tomlin could be building this roster into the NFL draft and who they might be looking at in the NFL draft with these with these updated signings because the Steelers were heavy in showing up with, with their coaching brass and their scouts at the Georgia Pro Day where there were several prospects who they could select in this upcoming NFL draft. I'm Chris Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast. We're going to talk a lot about Miles Jack, the linebackers, and some of those prospects right here on today's episode. Let's get into it. Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome everyone to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on this video. If you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please do so by hitting the subscribe button, uh, getting all of our daily content, and sometimes our bonus episodes that pop, that pop up from time to time and don't come on your audio feeds. But thank you for making the, the, the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day. Now, I imagine there's quite a few of those things saying, Chris, it wasn't my first listen every day because this episode was late. I apologize for that. We had several te technical difficulties. One, I recorded an entire episode with Josh Taylor before the Miles Jack signing on uh, on Wednesday. And it, he saw that that announcement came right as we had finished up and I had an event I had to get to. So I wasn't able to re-record with him immediately. But when I came back after the event, I re-recorded going into the night and I thought, OK, this is good. But then the audio was messed up because of some technical difficulties that were going on with the internet. And then I tried to re-record again. It was still having problems. And it was at that point, like two or three in the morning. I said, Chris, go to sleep. You got to get up and get, get you know, and, and do this again in the morning. Got up and did it again in the morning. And the audio was still jacking up. So hopefully I'm recording right now. And this is my last time recording this episode, but it's an exciting episode because the Steelers went and got miles Jack, a move that I've been talking about on this podcast for weeks because I've been I've been talking it up and saying like, hey man, this team needs another athletic linebacker to pair with Devin Bush. They need to be able to lock up the middle part of the field, and they went and did that in getting this guy. Now Miles Jack, not you know, this isn't Bobby Wagner in his prime, but it is an interesting way to address the position, because as I've said before. The the best thing the Steelers could do to like you know if if Devin if Devin Bush works out you want a guy who could partner with him and kind of be more the more physical bigger version of Devin Bush uh like not the you know, version but a more big and physical linebacker who could address the run take on blockers and you know be more physical up front because Devin Bush is smaller he's faster he's meant to go sideline to sideline help further down the field he's the kind of athlete at linebacker that you hope to um you know, to, to help you with coverage and getting sideline to sideline and covering tackle to tackle. So that's the guy, that's that guy, but you wanted a big linebacker. And we've talked a lot about guys like Chad Muma, guys like Quay Walker, guys in this NFL draft class, even Devin Lloyd, who could fill that bill. But Miles Jack isn't that. He's six foot one, 244 pounds officially. He's a lot like Devin Bush in that he's going to be moving around a lot. He's got the speed. He's got the agility. And he can hit, but he's not the, the big imposing threat in the middle of the field. But here's where I think that this plays really well for the Pittsburgh Steelers and why I think it's a really good contract that Kevin Colbert locked in because two years, $16 million, an average of $8 million a year, and you know that in that first year, he's not going to be he's not going to be taking up $8 million of salary cap space. That's just not how the Steelers work. But you have a guy now who you pair with Devin Bush, and you say for 2022, Devin, you're not on your fifth-year extension because of how you played last year. No offense to you, but we and we would like to keep you around. But we're trying to see how these how this linebacker situ, situation shapes out because this is trying. We're trying to make this an elite defense again. That's where the Steelers are at right now. And Miles Jack gives you extreme flexibility because, on all accounts, the Steelers are in a really good place 
to operate moving forward. A, if both linebackers turn out to be great, if Devin Bush and Miles Jack are just a lightning pair, you did it. You struck lightning in a bottle and you got your linebackers for the next five to six years. And you're happy about that and they pro- and you probably have an elite defense. But say Devin Bush doesn't work out. Say Devin Bush just doesn't get back to where he was before his ACL tear. And Miles Jack is good. Miles Jack is 26 years old. You can lock him up for the next four or five years. After this year, you can say, okay, we're giving you an extension. Pass on, pass down some of that money that you were going to make on the back end of your two-year deal. And then you do have your linebacker for the future. Say Miles Jack, but but also say Miles Jack is bad and Devin Bush is good. Well, you give Devin Bush the contract and you see what you can do with Miles Jack. And most likely, the way that Kevin Colbert does contracts, that second year, even though it probably it definitely has more year than the, more money than the first year first year of his contract, it's probably going to be something that doesn't keep the Steelers with a lot of dead cap space. Which means the Steelers will be able to move on from Miles Jack if it doesn't work out. But say both of them don't work out. Of course, what what happens if both of them just aren't aren't, aren't up to snuff and don't play the style of football that the Steelers are trying to be on defense? Well, guess what? Devin Bush isn't tied in with a whole lot of money because he's at the end of his rookie deal. And Miles Jack, like I just said, you could work around that. And then you just say, all right, scrap it. We're getting all new linebackers next year. You hit, be, be even more aggressive in free agency. Or focus on the NFL draft and get, and get yourself some linebackers. This is a really good class to get one, even though you just signed Miles Jack. I think there's some really good aspects of getting Miles Jack. Now, I, I want to get into also the fact he did have 108 tackles last year, led the Jacksonville Jaguars. It was a down year for him. Uh, for example, for over the past, over the two years prior, he had uh, nine passes defensed between those two years. Uh, he had an interception in each of his pri- uh, three years uh, prior to 2021. Um, so he definitely, you know, in production and play on the field, took a step back. But part of that is also because the Jaguars just, were just so bad. They were tough to watch. And it's tough to be a really good player on a really bad team and always be playing so well. I mean, ask, look at Matt Stafford. And I know that's a different position at quarterback, but he was with the Lions. A lot of people didn't think he had it. And like, ah, whatever that we, we saw in college isn't there. One year away from the Lions, Super Bowl. And I'm not saying Miles Jack is taking the Steelers to the Super Bowl. Don't try to quote me on that or put words in my mouth. All I'm saying is good to even great players can look washed or not that good on bad teams. And a relocation sometimes really works. And for the Steelers, they're getting this guy at 26 years old. I just, I see so much upside with this very little downside. There's always ways how things can go sideways, but I don't see that happening here. I think it's a brilliant move on the part of the Pittsburgh Steelers because it addresses a major position of need, but it also gives you room to continue addressing those major positions of need because the Steelers aren't done in free agency. I think that's the other thing here is that they could still make another big move even in this free agency period, setting themselves up with maybe the potential of having that elite defense that we think the Steelers could have in 2022. We'll talk about that in a sec, but first I got to talk to you guys about betonline.net. It's that time of the year with college basketball. March Madness is upon us. Games literally kick off a couple hours after I finish recording this. Tip off, not kick off. See, I'm still locked in on football and locked in on Steelers. But you want to get locked in on your bets on March Madness. And you do that by going to betonline.net. It has all the latest odds, contests, and player props because betonline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. It's not just basketball either. You can bet on you can bet on NBA. You can bet on hockey. You can bet on the NHL. You can bet on uh, UFC. You can also play live Vegas casino games right on, right on their website um, and get all your sports wagering information needs. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends and the action available to you when you visit that online where the game starts. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We're continuing to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers and the signing of Miles Jack and where the Steelers can go from here. Because I, I could gush about Miles Jack, but you've heard me talk about that for weeks here on the show. Because I said even when he was a Jaguar and still getting top dollars to be their linebacker, I said it's a possibility that he's coming to Pittsburgh there. He's some that I would keep an eye on because his contract was just way too high. The Jaguars are going through a head coaching change or really a whole organization change. And when you do that, normally the guys that are being paid way too high by the previous head coach and the previous, you know, you know, crew, 
those guys either get their contracts changed up, they get cut, or they get traded, something along those lines. And that's what happened with Miles Jack, and the Steelers needed a linebacker, just a really good fit. And again, 26 years old. But what can else what else do the Steelers need to do in free agency? It's a really good question. Because I've talked about it all along. This free agency, this, this draft needs to be about making this offensive line a really tough unit that gets things going for Najee Harris, makes things easier on Mitchell Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, whoever your quarterback is, because it's not going to be Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, or Sean Watson, or any of those guys. But you want to get you want to get your uh you want to get your defense up to being an elite defense, not just a good defense, an elite defense. They already got the pass rush together. Cam Hayward's there. Uh, TJ Watts there. Alex Highsmith's there. You think Stephon Tuitt's coming back. You got depth in the interior defensive line now. You can still address the defensive line. We'll talk about that in a bit. You got Minka Fitzpatrick. And now you got two linebackers who you're very hopeful for and have a reason to hope for that they're going to be really good. And you've got some depth at the cornerback position now. You got Cam Sutton and you got uh um Levi Wallace, the addition they made in free agency as their as their CB2. And you brought back Arthur Mullet as a slot option. But you still need a strong safety and you still need a CB1. Those are two major needs the Steelers still need to fill. Now, maybe what they're doing is buying biding their time, seeing, hey, we can address these in the draft. Maybe what they're doing is they're biding their time for a big contract. Now, there's rumors about Tyron Matthew. Now, Tyron Matthew. Excuse me, I'll do about Chris Collinsworth. Now, here's a guy, but seriously, Tyron Matthew, star safety. You put him next to Lincoln Fitzpatrick, you're really happy with the pick with that safety pair, right? You're thinking, man, that's the best safety pair in the NFL. And maybe it helps make your defense elite. But there's also, there's also still the need at CB1. And that's the one that you're not sure about because Stephon Gilmore is out there, but J.C. Jackson signed a big contract with the Chargers. And Carlton Davis went back to Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Those were your guys that were in their primes, mid-20s, who could play for several more years and you know be a franchise cornerback for the future. Those are the guys you were hoping to get, couldn't get, but you moved on. So now you're sitting there with – the potential of bringing back Akella Witherspoon, but you're not sure if he's CB1. You know, definitely CB2, but with Levi Wallace, that you don't need him at CB2. Maybe you bring him back at CB1. You still got Joe Hayden available, but he's 32 years old, and you kind of want that CB1 to be elite. And Joe Hayden had his day of being elite. But right now, he's more of that experienced veteran who's going to be a contributor and a leader in the locker room. And maybe if that's the best you can get, maybe that's what you need to go get. But the Steelers need to look at, you know, how they're going to approach the building building this unit carefully because, say they go get Stephon Gilmore. Well, then they're going to be in an interesting situation because, say, one of those top cornerbacks fall to them in the first round. Do they still take him? Because you got Stephon Gilmore, you still got to leave I was. I say yes, but one of those veterans is going to have to sit on the bench. Cam Sutton bumps into the slot. And this is why I think also making sure that you get a CB1 would be really helpful because if you get a true CB1 on the outside, you can line up that CB1 outside corner. Let's just say Stephon Gilmore just for the sake of this, this conversation. I guess it's more of a monologue. But you get Gilmore on, on, on at CB1, Levi Wallace at CB2, and in the slot you get Cam Sutton. And then... If one of those guys goes down, which happens every season, you know, cornerbacks just you know, everyone gets injured at some point. Cam Sutton bumps outside. He's your first outside corner replacement, which you've seen him play and you know be fine and do well. And then you already have Arthur Mullen under contract. He then becomes your slot corner as a backup rather than a starter. You can live with that. Not just live, I think you could thrive with that as being a backup option. But there's another idea for the slot that I think it could be really interesting is that the Steelers could have a situation where they work with three really good safeties. Now I'm not saying sign Teron, Teron Matthew and another safety, but I'm saying sign another a star, starting strong safety and then draft one of these guys. Cause this is a really good safety class. At least I think there's some guys that you could get in the first two rounds who would be willing to contribute early on. And then you still would have miles Killebrew and Trey Norwood coming off the bench. 
But this is also why, you know, whereas Tyron Matthew, extremely enticing, and Cam Hayward's been pushing for him publicly um, to join the Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll see how that plays out. Maybe he's the next big announcement. But Tyron Matthew was is, is going to cost you some money, and you know that Minka Fitzpatrick is going to cost you some money. And this is why I've been so big on Terrell Edmonds being an option here. But imagine this for a second. You get Terrell Edmonds. You get him for $5, 6000000 million a year, something like that. Three-year, four-year deal, whatever. He's paired with Minka Fitzpatrick, so you keep them you know, locked up together in their chemistry. But then you draft a really athletic safety. And you say to yourself, all right, you've got Minka Fitzpatrick, this athletic rookie, and Terrell Edmonds. And Edmonds then can then help out in the slot. He can help out against tight ends. He can help in the box where he's really good at. And if that safety is, is athletic back there with Minka Fitzpatrick, you've got two guys that you're looking at as your guys to play center field, fly around, be your cover two safeties could be a really good way to switch things up and make things difficult. And there's a guy I want to talk about in the third segment who could fit that profile, who the Steelers, I think, were looking at on Wednesday when they visited Georgia Pro Day. But there has to be another move here in free agency. The Steelers let go Zach Banner and Joe Schobert. We thought that they would do those. Uh, Zach Banner, very unfortunate situation, just you know, went from the guy who was, who was a reclamation project, came in, wanted to prove himself, did prove himself, became the team's swing tackle, did whatever they asked of him, earned earned a starting job, and then his first game as a starter had a terrible injury that set him back for two whole years. And that's just that's one of those unfortunate things in, in the tough business of football that you got to move on from as, as a team. Really unfortunate for him. Joe Schobert, this was what we thought when they traded for him. Either he was going to be a really good inside linebacker or you were going to let him go and save yourself a whole bunch of cap space the next year because you weren't tied to him too strong. And now, by my count, the Steelers have about $15 million in cap space. If you look at spot rack right now, that's a pretty good situation to be in. And a good amount of money to sign another big contract to a major player like a, like Miles Jack. Now, again, maybe it's Tyron Matthew. Maybe it's Terrell Edmonds. Maybe it's a few more players. Maybe Ke- Kevin Colbert's not done adding depth around the roster and saying, hey, we're going to get this guy. We're going to get this this guy. I think that uh, a running back behind Najee Harris with some experience who isn't Benny Snell or Anthony McFarland would be really useful to the Steelers. They could get a cheap tight end to go with Gentry and Fryermuth. There's a lot of different options there. But the point is that even with the signing of Miles Jack, they have those options. And those options could be big, Tyron Matthew, known and good like Terrell Edmonds, or small like a backup running back or a backup tight end. But either way, the Steelers have that flexibility, and I think that's a big credit to the Steelers' front office. We're going to take one more quick break here and and keep talking about, I I think that some of these answers as far as where the Steelers are going, not just with free agency, but with the NFL draft, might get answered by looking at this Georgia draft class that has 14 players who were invited to the combine this year. That's an absurd absurd number, and and the Steelers were out in force at their pro day Wednesday. And I want to point out some guys that you should be looking at. And you probably know some of those names, but some guys that you might not be thinking about looking at that could play a big factor in the Steelers draft plans. But first, we got to talk to you guys about rockauto.com. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30%, 50%, or even 100% more for the same parts for from a chain store or a car dealership? For example, if you go get a Honda Odyssey fuel pump at a chain store, it's $353. But if you went to rockauto.com, it's just $216. That's a lot of money you're saving yourself. Rock Auto is a family-owned business serving do it yourself for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. They have everything that you could need, from brake parts to tail lamps to motor oil and even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today and find the solution to your auto part needs by going to rock, rockauto.com right now, and you'll see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We're continuing our talk on the Pittsburgh Steelers after they have signed Miles Jack and what else they could do. But one thing that they, they've they already done, now uh, Thursday they are visiting the Clemson Pro Day, which rings very much of Andrew Booth Jr. as a guy that they could be looking at. Um, but Wednesday they visited uh, Georgia, and there's any number of guys that they could have that they could have uh, they could have visited in that point in time. Because Georgia had, again, 14 guys who were invited 
to the NFL scouting com combine. And there are some guys, and, and of those 14, nine or 10 of them are expected to go in the first three rounds if you look at mock drafts across the board. And there's certain guys that everyone's talking about. Jordan Davis, Devontae Wyatt, the two defensive tackles, just mean, huge, thick, athletic dudes. Jordan Davis, six foot six, 340 run pounds, around four seven eight in a forty yard in a in a forty yard dash. That is the fastest ever that's that someone in his side or over three hundred pounds has has moved. It's ridiculous. He's a ridiculous athlete, and they got to see those personal drills. Uh, where he was moving, where he was moving back and forth and handling different things at 310 pounds. Yeah, he was. It's the fastest ever time that they saw at the combine. He's explosive. He's quick hips, and a lot of people project a lot out of him. Devontae Wyatt, though, also really good time. 4.77. He's 304 pounds, so a little bit lighter than Jordan Davis, which is why he's you know, he's the fastest. That's the fastest ever time I think by a 300 pound guy, and he was the fastest defensive tackle in the in the combine this season. But the two of them are, are game records. Now, Jordan Davis is getting a lot more attention because he's bigger and uh, he, uh, he he looked like – I think there were times he looked like a true game record with some really good highlights in college. Granted, he didn't have the spectacular production. If you looked at the pure numbers, people were like, well, he didn't do this. He didn't do that. And there were times in games where you were kind of wondering where he was. But this is a guy who was a true athlete, shows real stamina, and even though Georgia was taking him off the field on third downs, I have to wonder if that's more of just a coaching thing because Georgia was just so loaded with talent that you can keep him with fresh legs. And not necessarily a thing that he couldn't do it. But again, either one of those guys would be a welcome addition to the Pittsburgh Steelers defensive line. Now, Mike Tomlin said himself, he's like, uh, when asked about Jordan Davis, he's like, you know, I, I think he's going to be hugging Roger Goodell before I get up to the po or we get up to the podium at 20. Because he knows people are going to be on. And I agree with him. I think the, I think the Eagles are a team with three, three draft picks. They're probably going to be the team that gets Jordan Davis. I just don't see him falling on the way down to 20. Devontae White, though, could. Now, the question is, would you want Devontae White? Because you got a lot of other positions you can address, like Andrew Booth Jr., the cornerback from Clemson, who the Steelers are probably going to be looking at today on this, th this Thursday. But these aren't the only two guys that were being looked at. There's also the linebacker class. Now, of course, you're probably thinking, whoa, Chris, I <laughs> just signed Miles Jack. Why didn't you look at linebacker? I agree. N'Kobe Dean was already off my list because he's very much a Devin Bush type, another fast, athletic linebacker, definitely a leader, definitely a guy you want on your team. But just with Devin Bush, and especially with Miles Jack now, you'd have three versions of the same guy, uh, athletically speaking wise. You're, you're okay there. But the other two guys, Quay Walker and Channing Tindall, two guys that we've talked about on this podcast before. Uh, uh, Quay, Quay Walker, six foot four, two forty one, ran a four point five two in the forty yard dash. Big physical would be the the type that you could pair with a Devin Bush or a Miles Jack and say, "Hey, you're the physical guy. Go be physical. Go hit people. Go get up on those offensive linemen. Go shed those blocks. Do those things." I could see, I could see, I could see that working out. And he probably wouldn't call. He's not going to cost you a first and maybe even a second round pick. He might be a guy that would be around in the third round. Channing Tindall, six foot two, two hundred and thirty pounds, ran a four point four seven in the forty yard dash. You've heard Arthur Motes talk about him on this show because I brought him on about a week or two ago, and he was talking about Channing Tindall was his guy, and he's another guy you could probably get into into the third round. And that way, you're looking really good and athletic and young at linebacker, but you still spent your first two draft picks addressing other positions. But again, there's plenty to look at with this Georgia pro day. Now, Mike Tomlin was videoed looking very closely at George Pickens. Now, not as closely as some thought, because it was a, it was a video that you saw on Twitter where George Pickens was running this route against this coach who was in a hoodie and the coach was kind of moving really well with him. Like, wow, Mike Tomlin still got it. And I was like, guys, Mike Tomlin's the guy in the background watching. He's not, he's not, he's not doing all that no more. And yes, Mike Tom was a fine athlete in his day, but he, he ain't trying to do all that right now. But George Pickens, six foot three, 195, a 4.47 on the 40 yard dash, got the pedigree of an NFL play. And the Steelers love those type of guys, guys whose whose family have been in the NFL because they know what it takes to get there and know what it takes to stay there. They have people who've been in their ears their whole lives. Of course, George Pickens, the son of Carl Pickens, former Bengals wide receiver, used to terrorize the Steelers in the 90s. George Pickens could be a guy that you could that you could add. He's a playmaker, wide receiver, runs good routes, has good hands. Could be an addition that that, that, that solves everything. Not solves everything, but gives you another weapon for the future. Because I do think the Steelers need to start looking at younger wide receivers to get back into that receiver room. Um, Deontay Johnson's on the back end of his deal. Chase Claypool's entering year three. They don't have Juju Smith-Schuster locked up right now. They need some guys that can uh, 
get younger in the room for to get ready for whoever comes in at cornerback next year. Because again, I don't think Mitch Trubisky nor Mason Rupp is the future plan of the Pittsburgh Steelers. But again, even outside of George Pickens and, and the and the Wyatt and Davis and, and the three linebackers, a guy that I really think that the Steelers should take a look at and keep their eye on is their safety, Lewis Seen from Georgia. Now Lewis Seen is six foot two, 199, hits like a Mack truck. He is a tackling phenom for Georgia but he ran a 4.37 in the 40-yard dash. This is a guy who could be, and there I go, Chris Collinsworth, and again, this is a guy who could be your starting strong safety of the future. And even if, so, for all those people that, that whenever I talk about Terrell Edmonds and I speak it in positively, I get a lot of pushback. Oh, he's not that good, Chris. You just like him because you like him. And I'm like, listen, no, I think that Terrell Edmonds is a good athlete, a good player. He's not a great player. And I think that's where people are mad about it because he was a first-round pick. However you feel about his draft pick, that's fine. But I think he's done a fine job since he's been with the Steelers. But getting a Lewis scene would allow Terrell Edmonds to then stick to a role, like I was talking about earlier in the show, that'd be more suited to his needs. He can play more in the box. He can help a little bit more in the slot, help him more against tight ends, help against the run. And Lewis Seen is the pedigree of a safety who could play back there with Minka Fitzpatrick. And you don't have to use him all the time. You could bring him on and off as he learns the defense but he has the speed to be a center fielding type of safety. So you could disguise where Mika Fitzpatrick is. And you'll have that three safety rotation that everyone's going to have to fear or respect because Mika Fitzpatrick, like I said before, that th their job this year and uh, one of Terrell Austin's biggest job is to find a way to free him up, get him to be, be that X factor guy. Again, Lewis seems a guy, he could be his own X factor in, in, in a couple ways, but you have him be the physical guy that helps Terrell Edmonds and can be responsible and athletic enough to play deep in coverage, play cover two with Mika Fitzpatrick. There's some skills there, and he has good size, good speed. I've seen him projected to go in the back end of the first round for some for some mock drafts. There's a couple looks there. I think that would be really interesting. Again, this Georgia Pro Day is a, is a perfect example. And the reason I wanted to talk about it was because, not just because of the athletes, but also because the way that Kevin Colbert has set the Steelers up for this NFL draft class is that – all the, not all the glaring needs, but most of the glaring needs are addressed. They have a quarterback battle that they can go into camp with. They brought back Montrevious Adams, so you presumably you have your defensive tackle depth lined up. you got a starting linebacker to pair with Devin Bush. Now that's less of a question. You brought in Levi Wallace, so you at least have a, a few cornerbacks on your roster that you can say, okay, you're veterans, figure it out. Still need to add that. Now they still do need a strong safety. But they've addressed the offensive line. James Daniels, Mason Cole brought back a core for. But none of these moves really preclude you from going and getting another guy that you could like in the NFL draft. Now, I don't think they're drafting a linebacker in the first round. I did think that was possible before, but that's out with Miles Jack and Devin Bush. But second, third round, that's actually the, like the really good value of this of this linebacker class. Where the Chad Moomas, where the Channing Tingles, Tindles, where the Quay Walkers. Brian Asamoah, those, all of those type of guys, that's where the rounds you go get them. And then, of course, you get you can you can spend your first round pick still addressing. You know, if you want, if say Tyler Linderbaum or Zion Johnson is just the best guy on the big board, you know what? Go get them. And then you just have a really good setup and a really good camp battle coming for who's going to be your starting three inside lineback lineman. Kevin Dotson, the rookie you drafted in the first round. Mason Cole, Kendrick Green, or James Daniels. And James Daniels, you presume he's going to start. I think Kevin Dodson has a pretty good chance, too. But that'd be a heck of a position battle. And it would give you a really good chance at having a really good offensive line in, 20, in 2022. Because the offensive tackles weren't a big problem last year. It was really the interior of the offensive line. Trey Turner not really being able to be his best. And Kendrick Green just having a really rough rookie year. And then Kevin Dotson being injured, and then Joe Haig getting injured, and then eventually them calling up a guy named Leglu. But again, all these moves that Kevin Colbert has made, including Miles Jack, gives the Steelers flexibility, which is the biggest thing that they need right now. And why I still think there's a chance that they're bringing back Terrell Evans. But if they if they can land one more star player on defense, whether that's Teron Matthew, whether that's Stephon Gilmore, whether it's a trade that we're not even think about thinking about right now, because that don't forget that could be in in, in the works. But if they add that one more star and then get that depth piece, you're going to be in a position where, man, this is a really good draft class to just build for the future. 
and you could go get yourself one of those Georgia Georgia, Georgia defensive tackles and Wyatt or Davis if they're sitting there at 20 and not feel any bad about it because you're like, you know what? Yeah, we know that defensive line is really the strongest part of our team, but we added to it anyways because we did the other things leading into it. That's why I think the Steelers are in a really good spot. That's why I think that, that Steelers fans should be really excited what Kevin Colbert has done in free agency. It's why I also told y'all to wait before y'all was coming at the man because he didn't make a whole bunch of moves right, right away. And there could be moves, more moves coming very soon. So all that being said, I'm Chris Carter of Locked on Steelers Podcast. Thanks so much for checking out this show. Again, very sorry for it, for it coming out so late. I have re-recorded this episode three or four times now because of just all the things that I've had to do to, to, to try and get this to work. I hope that this is actually the last time that I record this episode. But stay tuned. We got a lot more coming your way. We'll have Jenna Harner on here from Channel 11 WPXI tomorrow, breaking things down on your Pittsburgh Steelers. Any additional uh uh, coverage points that we have that we have for you uh that any additional uh moves that have been made we'll be talking about them we'll also be ten- we'll also be talking more about what the what the moves have set them up for anything else that we're looking forward into the weekend pro days coming up it's going to be a really exciting time for Pittsburgh Steelers fans in the off season which you don't get to say that often because normally the Steelers are the team that don't make any moves but here they are making moves thanks again for checking us out if you want to support us, go on Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review with a positive comment, and you'll get a special shot at the end of the show. Like this person, Charlie000111, who says, good job, five stars. Love this podcast and all the draft information. It's great. Can't wait to listen to the pod draft, the, uh, the post-draft recap and break and, and break down. Thank you. Love the podcast. Keep it up. Thank you, Charlie000111. We appreciate you for your five-star review. We appreciate everyone who leaves five-star reviews with their positive comments. Again, if you've already re- left one, leave another one. It really helps us out. But thanks again for checking us out and giving us five stars. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button to get all of our daily content, including our bonus episodes, like when they sign up player, like Miles Jack. I'm Chris Carter of the Lockdown Steelers podcast. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Back on your screens and in your ears tomorrow with more on your Pittsburgh Steelers.